Well, Central Michigan University has just begun the search for a new president. Thanks for watching New Central 34. I'm Kelly O'Rourke. And I'm Anne Marie LaFlame. According to Central Michigan Life, Board of Trustees Chairwoman Gail Toriano said she and the board are first working to locate an executive search firm by sending out requests for proposals to prospective groups. Twelve requests have been turned into the board uh, and trustees are now working to evaluate the information. According to board policy, trustees must organize a screening committee comprised of various on and off campus people who have vested interest in the university. These people include the Academic Senate Chair, Student Government Association President, four trustees, one administrator, and at least one member of the general public. There are plans for a website that will launch at the end of April to disperse new information on the search as it continues to unfold. The Grand Rapids Police Department has released an Amber Alert for a kidnapped little girl. The alert was issued earlier today for a small girl who was walking on Kalamazoo Avenue near Gibson in Grand Rapids. A witness says they saw two men driving a full-size green GMC van with tinted windows and a spare tire on the back abduct the girl. The missing girl is a black female, approximately seven years old, with black hair and a ponytail, and was wearing a black jacket with Fat Farm on the back. The suspect who pulled her into the van is described as a black male with a heavy build, a large bushy beard, and was last seen wearing black clothing and a black hat. If you have any information that could help, the Grand Rapids Police urge you to contact them at 616-456-3400. Color and culture will combine this weekend as Central Michigan University hosts its annual powwow. Native Americans from across the United States and Canada will compete at Central Michigan University's 20th annual powwow Saturday and Sunday in Rose Arena. The lively competition offers traditional Native American music and dance. CMU history professor Benjamin Ramirez Shell Wignabi explains the importance of the powwow to the Native American community and the people of Mount Pleasant. People to come together, Native people and non-Indian people to come together socially and then enjoy a good cultural event. Uh, in Anishinaabe it's called Nimi Ding. You'll get a chance for, uh, if you're a non-Indian or somebody out of, outside the culture, to learn and to see Native people who are actually still maintaining and holding on to a value system and still behaving <laughs> and doing all kinds of traditions. Admission to the event is $7 for adults and $5 for senior citizens. Grand entries begin at 1 and 7 p.m. Saturday and noon on Sunday. Well, a group of CMU students will be doing their part tomorrow to help those in need. About a dozen Central Michigan University students will travel to Grand Rapids tomorrow to hand out food at the Second Harvest Gleaners Food Bank starting bright and early at 8 a.m. On top of handing out food, volunteers will also restock the food bank's dry goods pantry, assemble personal care item boxes, and sort products. More than 70% of all CMU students volunteer or perform community service during their years at the university. CMU has been named the Nationwide President's Community Service Honor Roll each year of the program's existence. And as President Rao decides to move on from Central Michigan University, another top CMU official will also move on to new beginnings. According to CM Life, Mike Leto, CMU Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations, will soon be Vice Chancellor for Alumni and Affairs at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. University President Michael Rao referred to Leto as, quote, a master of business and a great asset to CMU, end quote. Leto was offered the position Tuesday and will begin work at the university on June 22nd. Warm weather meant for an enjoyable St. Patrick's Day for many Mount Pleasant residents. But local police still had to crack down. The nice weather led to many outdoor parties. Throughout the day, 26 minor and possession possession citations were handed out by the Mount Pleasant Police Department. That's five more citations than last St. Patrick's Day. Isabella County Sheriff's Department is happy with their number of citations. Only two MIPs were handed out and one drunk driving arrest. The Sheriff's Department says those numbers are lower than previous years. And Mount Pleasant residents who are interested in enjoying some Big B coffee are out of luck. The Mount Pleasant location closed on Monday after business owner Mike Densmore could not afford to pay the rent on the lease. Densmore expressed his sentiment to a community in a note he taped to the glass door of the building saying, quote, 
Please know that this decision was not an easy one and that significant measures were taken in hopes of advertising the closure. I have enjoyed serving you for the past 12 plus months. And as snow begins to melt, the casualties of the winter begin, begin to become, become more visible. According to the Morning Sun, a crew of jail trustees and a correction officer began the annual task of picking up the dead deer carcasses after calls began coming into the Isabella County Sheriff's Department Thursday morning. While some people believe the program is year-round, pickups are only in the late winter and early spring, according to the Isabella County Sheriff, Leo Medicheski. Residents are encouraged to call the Sheriff's Department at 773-5911 to report locations of the dead animals. And about 20 members of the Pine River Task Force staged a demonstration at the Velsicle plant site in St. Louis yesterday. Task Force Chair Jane Keon told New Central 34 that photos were taken of the task force in an effort to encourage lawmakers to vote on the Superfund to be reinstated. The Superfund was created in 1980 as a trust fund to clean up sites, and by 2003 its money had run out. Now the money comes from taxpayers. A report released by the Center for Health, Environment and Justice called Superfund in the Eye of the Storm focuses on new studies that reveal threats from the climate changes. St. Louis is one of the sites mentioned in the report. When the vesicle plant closed, the site wasn't cleaned up. And last week, Clare County Animal Control Officers took nine horses and 23 dogs from a Greenwood Township home. And things are finally starting to calm down. According to the Morning Sun, currently two of the nine horses remain at the shelter. Others are being fostered and all are under the care of a veterinarian. The 23 Golden Retrievers were taken and were unlicensed, but in better condition than the horses. At the time of the seizure, the horses had not been handled and were scared of people. Warrants are pending for the owners of the animals, who could be charged with animal neglect. And that'll do it for us tonight. Before. I'm Kelly O'Rourke. Thank you for watching and happy spring.